Howard University just became the latest college to dissolve their classics department. The classes will still be offered, however, uh, but I guess it's it's no longer a big deal. And so people are have all kinds of responses to this. Right, so I wanted to focus today on the recent story that consists of Howard University removing the classics department from their university, meaning that students can no longer major in the classics. And of course, the classics being thinkers such as Plato and writings consisting of Plato's Republic. However, students can still take these courses as electives. Now, we have to analyze this from various perspectives. Some have taken the position that some of the teachings, narratives, viewpoints, and perspectives exfoliated in the classics is irrelevant and no longer has any merit within the current social and or political context because there's no doubt that there are aspects found in Plato's Republic that are no longer relevant within the current modern socio-political context, especially within the context of Western democracies, be it US, UK, and Canada. However, some have taken the position that they're not relevant from the standpoint of within the current job market or the market itself. Now, the position that I would occupy in regards to what Dr. West in similar fashion occupies when it comes to his piece within the Washington Post is that what the classics allow for an individual to engage in critical thinking and that critical thinking consists of asking the question why. Why, why, why critical questions lead to sufficient answers. Because we always want to ask deeper questions in regards to why a specific issue exists. For example, it's not enough just to make the statement that if you're an alcoholic, why don't you just quit? Now for some, interventions can work or some in certain precarious situations can outright quit on their own despite years of drinking. It's a rarity, but it can happen. But for the most part, we have to ask then, why don't individuals that are alcoholics stop drinking? And some provide a superficial and surface level answer. Why don't you just stop? But of course, individuals been made aware of merely just stopping, but there's a deeper pathology at play that we have to assess in regards to why are individuals not stopping. And of course, that can take us down a road of a psychological analysis, a sociological analysis, and even economic analysis, but also a philosophical analysis in regards to what plagues the human condition at a deeper level. That's the need and or necessity of the classics and what it allows for us to do. But there's no doubt that that aspect and or teachings are not prominent within the context of the labor market or at least within the context of the labor market tied to a sort of middle to upper class existence because of course there's always criticism of those that major in philosophy will just end up in uh, McDonald's but of course that's not the reality a lot of people also major within the context of the classics or the philosophy department at large and go on to law school because it allows for individuals to engage in critical thinking and have a hyper sense of critical thinking. 
But uh, I want to just make a point of emphasis here on what Dr. West had to say in regards to his opinion piece in the Washington Post. And what he says explicitly here, and I quote, Academy's continual campaign to disregard or neglect the classics is a sign of spiritual decay, moral decline, and a deep intellectual narrowness running amok in American culture, period. Those who commit this terrible act treat Western civilization as either irrelevant and not worthy of prioritization or as harmful and worthy only of condemnation, thereby sort of highlighting that paradox at play that we just discussed in regards to both the negative and as well as positive aspects associated with the classics as it pertains to being a department within universities. But uh, let's hear what uh, some of the co-hosts on The View had to say. Okay, Sonny, you, you have a, a feeling about the classics and where they belong in today's society? Yeah, I do, because I, I, like Megan, had to study uh, the classics in college. You know, I was a communications major, so I had to read all of that. And um, I also read um, Dr. West's um, Washington Post op-ed, and I, I agree with it. Um, th there's just no question that when you read Socrates and you read um, Plato um, and, and you read the classics, it helps you in terms of understanding um, critical thinking and understanding nuance and understanding um, just sort of um, clarity of thought and attention to detail. Those things are, are really important in learning your own voice. Um, and so I'm disappointed um, in, in Howard's decision. I don't really understand it. My understanding is that they launched this academic and administrative program uh, initi prioritization initiative in the spring of 2017, and it was supposed to strengthen the university's overall academic program portfolio. Um, and I don't know how this strengthens that. I think you should add certainly um, writings um, from, you know, premier authors from Africa and from Asia. Um, but uh, taking away these types of classics doesn't make sense, especially if you read things like Dr. King's um, letter from a Birmingham jail uh, in, in, from 1963. I mean, he quotes Socrates three times. So there's no question that, um, you know, the, the foremost black thinkers read these classics. So I, I think this was a misstep right. by Howard. 